Mitch Jenkins and Alan Moore. The first rule is never talk about Fight Club. Unless I get to be the cowboy, I'm not playing. Any area that I've ever involved myself in, I've rolled up my sleeves and played. And that's the good thing about Alan, you know, he keeps you in stitches, he really does. Um, occasionally I make him laugh, every now and again I come out with a good joke. He generally writes it down, you know, brings it out, takes credit himself later. There is no I in team, but there is no you in dictatorship. Each partner should recognise the other's absolute sovereignty in their particular field of expertise. Mitch will give me the last word when it comes to writing and I will certainly give Mitch the last word when it comes to the visual presentation of the film. It would be kind of stupid to do otherwise. I think the one thing that works for us so well is we're not in competition with each other. If we both had these egos, <laughs> I'm the director, but I'm Alan Moore, we'd get nothing done. If you imagine a partnership as a kind of pantomime horse, the performance will probably not be best enhanced if they have both unilaterally decided to head in opposite directions. It would probably spoil the entire pantomime. You should be able to tell each other exactly what you want and what you don't want. Don't wait until you're three quarters of the way through to discover that you both wanted entirely different things. It's a bit like, I suppose, uh, Lenny and George from uh, Of Mice and Men, in that one collaborator should be the one who is capable of holding a rational, coherent conversation, of dealing sensibly with practical matters as they come up, and the other creator should be a hulking man-child who kills rabbits without really understanding what he's done. Well, the thing about Alan and I's relationship is that we, we both know each other's strengths and weaknesses. His weakness is that he hasn't got any bloody internet. You always sort of like have to ring him on a landline, and if he's not there, you don't get through to him, or you can always email his assistant which uh, he then prints out the email and runs around to Alan's and put it through the letterbox. So from that point, uh, my strength is that I've got an internet um, at home and a computer and I can use it and a mobile phone. But what we both bring to it are just so radically different things. Alan doesn't like dealing in the world of the big commercial uh, beast that it is, going out there and playing the, um, the bad cop. I'm the bad cop and he's the delusional cop. And that's how we see each other. You should keep your friends close and your enemies in a bloodstained lockup in Walthamstow. The only time that we've ever had any kind of fracture within our collaboration is when you do have these crazy people from the outside sticking their oar in with silly expectations of myself and Alan. But I'm getting much better at controlling that. I'm the bastard of the pair of us. But someone has to be. Someone has to be. So, yeah, just kill them all. Kill them all, bury them deep. If you are doing something that you are entirely comfortable with, that is probably because you have done it before or that somebody else has done it before. So there is little point in actually doing it again. So you should probably always take on incredibly difficult and hard projects that will probably be the ruin of you. 
tea, always tea. Don't try anything else. When it comes to uh, hashish in particular, Mitch is an unutterable lightweight. I just occasionally, occasionally have a little puffet. And then I forget everything. My own tolerance is um, frighteningly high. And then I'm just sort of like sitting there just, yeah, really? What? Earth people sometimes have difficulty with it. We stick to tea. It's the only thing we can synchronise. Anything else, I'm just, yeah, I'm just not in his league. When you've been drinking as much tea as we've been doing over the years, it all starts to uh, just come together. And then when you then start thinking, well, hold on, what if? And it is, it's those what if moments that true collaboration allows you to get to. That really comes with longevity of a relationship um, and trust. Collaborators should be committed or at the very least sectioned. If you actually put everything you've got into every work that you take part in, then you will be rewarded a hundredfold. That does require an incredible degree of commitment. However, if I ever thought for even a moment that this was going to be damaging the relationship between me and Mitch, then the project would be over. And I think I'm fairly sure that Mitch feels exactly the same way. I, at the end of the day, tend to think that ordinary human relationships are probably more important than all of the accomplishments of the artistic world. The last rule is that you should always, always stick to a base 10 counting system. If you look at, say, the Babylonians with their base 60 counting system, they have left very little in the way of quality cinema. And oh, I think that that speaks for itself, doesn't it? Well, I want to know, after your little analogy with um, Haddock and Tintin. Captain Haddock and Tintin. Yeah, but who's, who's Haddock and who's Tintin? <laughs> well, I mean, I would have thought that would have been. Kind of obvious, but well, not really. Us. I mean, Haddock's a bit of a, a bit of a lush, and I like a drink. Well, that's true, but, but I do have blonde hair, so I could be Tintin, couldn't I? I think that you're more of a lightly Tintin than I am. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sort of in, impugning your behaviour or anything like that with the, with that analogy. I mean, I'm not suggesting that you've got a little dog or that you run around the world. Although you do, no, actually, I do run around the world. You run around the world having adventures. I don't do, you? yeah. Mitch in Tibet. Mitch in Tibet, but I haven't got the dog.